for joining us. A Kurdish news agency has now released pictures, it says, of the eight Turkish soldiers reportedly captured by the PKK on Sunday. The Firat news agency says these pictures show the men are in good health. There has been no confirmation as yet of the identity of the men shown here. Turkey has said that eight of its troops are missing. Our Iraq correspondent Huda Abdel Hamid is in Zakho near the border with Turkey. She says it's no coincidence the, picture, coincidence the pictures have been published on a day of high profile diplomacy. And certainly the timing is quite significant. It is a day of high diplomacy between Turkey and Baghdad trying to find a solution to solve this crisis. And there's the PKK showing these pictures on a website. And it's a move that is certainly going to anger uh, the government in Turkey. It's going to put a lot of pressure from the public opinion, a public opinion that has already been calling on the government to take a swift action against the PKK. And it's a bit, it also comes at a strange timing in the sense that the Yesterday, the PKK was calling for a ceasefire. There was some conflicting report about the ceasefire and the conditions of the ceasefire, but it just would add more tension for the Turkish government at this stage. And far away from the continuing military buildup on Turkey's border with Iraq, it's been a day of intense diplomatic activity. It comes as the British Prime Minister referred to the fighters of the PKK as terrorists. And Iraq's foreign minister said Baghdad would cut their funding and restrict their movements. Mike Hanna has more. The might of Turkish military massing on Iraq's northern border. The crisis continuing in the wake of a series of PKK attacks. According to the Turkish government, more than 40 of its soldiers killed in recent weeks and another eight being held by the PKK. The army is poised to strike, but dialogue still holds sway. The Turkish Prime Minister meeting his British counterpart and hearing words of strong support. We condemn absolutely and unequivocally uh, the terrorist violence of PKK. But it's made clear that Turkey has not waived the right to take unilateral action should it think fit. The Iraqi government must know that we can exercise this mandate which we have received from the Turkish parliament at any time. And Turkish dialogue too with Iraq, the foreign minister holding meetings in Baghdad and receiving another pledge of support. And we will not allow any party or any group, including the PKK, to poison uh, our bilateral relations. And also, I reassured the minister that uh, the Iraqi government will actively uh, help Turkey to overcome uh, this menace. But no concrete measures outlined, and the Turkish foreign minister reminds all of the pressure his government is facing back home. Turkey is a country which respects and defends political unity of Iraq, territorial integrity of Iraq. These are matters of principle for us. But on the other hand, fighting against terrorism is another matter of principle for us. And these two principles are not conflicting with each other. And the groundswell of Turkish anger evident in cities and towns throughout the country. The anger all the more intense in a society where the military has always held a special place. The funeral of one of the dead soldiers an occasion for every Turk to mourn. And the call on the government is loud and strong. Unleash the army or suffer more soldiers dead. But the troops on the border remain in check. The government seemingly willing at this point to bide its time. So the dialogue continues. The Turkish government continuing to accede to international requests to exercise restraint. The question is whether it can continue to do so in the face of mounting public pressure within Turkey to take some kind of concrete action. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Ankara. Thousands of Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails have staged a symbolic hunger strike a day after an inmate was killed during a prison riot. This was the aftermath. A fire destroyed part of the jail after Israeli guards using rubber bullets and tear gas clashed with inmates after launching a search for weapons. Jackie Rowland reports. The aftermath of clashes between Israeli guards and Palestinian prisoners at a jail in the Negev. 
Prison officials say the violence erupted when guards went through the cells looking for weapons. Prisoners threw stones. Guards responded using what they described as non-lethal weapons. News of the prison riot has provoked outrage across the occupied territories. There are more than 10,000 Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails, and they're widely respected as fighters against the occupation. In towns across the West Bank, Palestinians have been making their anger felt. Here in Ramallah, it's the mothers who've taken the lead. They feel like the Israelis have locked up their sons and thrown away the key. He's blind. You know, as, as a prisoner, you know, he can't see, nobody can help, nobody can visit him. He's from Jerusalem. This is a woman, she has seven prisoners in prison, or her family, or her kids. Nobody can visit them. People here don't buy the Israeli version of events at the jail, especially now that one prisoner has died of his wounds. Palestinian police are having to calm Palestinian outrage. It's an explosive atmosphere just weeks before peace talks are due to take place in the United States. There is no agreement without releasing all the Palestinian prisoners from the Israeli jails. It is one uh, item, it is one important item, every any uh, agreement we shall reach with the Israelis. In Gaza too, people are letting their feelings be known. Almost every Palestinian family has a relative who is either in jail or who has been in jail. Ordinary people want their leaders to put more pressure on Israel to let the prisoners go home. Jackie Rowland, Al Jazeera, Ramallah. An Israeli missile has hit a car in the central Gaza Strip, killing one person. That's according to Palestinian medical officials. Earlier, Israeli soldiers killed two Palestinian gunmen in the occupied West Bank. The attack was carried out near the city of Jenin in the north. The two dead Palestinians are believed to be members of the Islamic Jihad faction. An Israeli soldier was also lightly injured and six other Palestinians were arrested during the raid. The U.S. military says it's killed 11 people, including six civilians, in an airstrike north of Baghdad. Local police say the dead were farmers, women and children. We're also getting reports of heavy clashes south of the capital, mostly in the cities of Basra and Diwaniya. Witnesses there say militiamen loyal to Maktada Sadr are ignoring his recent appeal for a ceasefire and are fighting street battles with government forces. Now, it's impoverished and lawless, home to a resilient Taliban and poppy fields which produced half of this year's global supply of heroin. But now NATO says it's making progress in Afghanistan's southern province of Helmand, taking over areas previously held by the Taliban and making them safe for the people who live there. Our correspondent Hamish MacDonald joined the British Marines on patrol in the Sangin Valley to see if the Afghans there share the same feeling. Flying out of Camp Bastion for the Sangin Valley, we're expecting to see signs of change. There is no real oasis of calm across the vast, unforgiving plains of Helmand province. This is still very much a battleground, but we're told the dynamics are starting to shift. This is absolutely definitely government terrain now. You can go two, three kilometres to the north as we have done, two, three kilometres to the south as we have done, and there is not uh, Taliban uh, entrenchments, uh, there are not large numbers of fighters. Helmand province is one of the most violent parts of Afghanistan. These children live in a region which this year produced enough opium poppy to supply half of the world's heroin. And the Afghan government says the profits are helping to fund the Taliban's fight. The British forces in Sangin say that this is an area they are making progress, that the Taliban is being scattered and that a secure environment is being established. So we've decided to come on a foot patrol with the Royal Marines to test whether that really is the case. There is evidence to support that. Sangin was, we're told, virtually empty of residents six months ago. Now the annual crop is making its way to market. But just like the harvest, farmers here accept that security is anything but guaranteed. The foreigners haven't done anything for us. They haven't even built one bridge. The security isn't good enough for them to do that. The people of Sangin are not always happy to see the British soldiers. Indeed, no one we spoke to said they wanted foreign forces here. Though that doesn't mean they desire the alternative.